rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, and then shall the end come. Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Here's today's prophecy update. Isaac Herzog is the leader of Israel's opposition and the head of the Zionist Union. He hopes to replace Benjamin Netanyahu as the Prime Minister of Israel. It has now been revealed that before the elections of 2015, he signed a secret agreement with the Palestinians to create a Palestinian state in Judea, Samaria, and to make Jerusalem a shared capital with the Palestinians. The agreement also provided for the Temple Mount to be placed under international control. Prime Minister Netanyahu is now attempting to bring Herzog and his Zionist Union into his government. Is Netanyahu ready to make the big compromise in order to reach an historic peace agreement? Something is certainly going on. Well, it's incredible times that we're living in, and I want to start out today by quickly telling you about a prophecy conference we will be holding this Saturday night and Sunday morning. Uh, that conference is going to be held in Connecticut. Uh, I will be speaking, and let me get there real quickly for you. I will be speaking on Saturday evening at 7 p.m., that's June the 25th, on America's God-given destiny. This is a message that I think every American needs to hear. Now, before we've talked about the United States and Bible prophecy, absolute proof. We're going to review that at this session on Saturday evening, but we're going far beyond that because the big question is, what's going to happen to America in the end time? Will America be a part of the new world order, a part of the one world government of the Antichrist? Will we fall into the power of the mark of the beast? Will we forsake Israel? All these questions will be answered Saturday evening in Simsbury, Connecticut. That's June the 25th, 7 p.m. at the Ethel Walker School Chapel. That's 230 Bushy Hill Road in Simsbury, Connecticut. Then on Sunday morning at 10 a.m., I'm going to be speaking on breaking prophetic fulfillments. What's happening right now? The cutting edge prophetic fulfillments that we're presently in the middle of. I'll be speaking on that and then throwing it open for questions and answers. Uh, we'll be taking questions from the floor and it's this has proven to be a really popular feature because there's a lot of things people want to know that they've never had the chance to ask the question of. The Sunday morning session will be at the Life United Pentecostal Church, 507 Hop Meadow Street in Simsbury. That's Life United Pentecostal Church, 507 Hop Meadow Street in Simsbury, Connecticut. So Saturday evening, 7 p.m., Sunday morning, 10 a.m. I hope you can attend both sessions. And if you need more information, simply go to end time.com click on the events button on the conference link and there you will see all the information that you need all of you that are out there i hope you can be with us and by the way we have people drive three four five hours to come to the conferences so don't let a few miles stop you also i do want to take a moment just to tell all of you once again because i ask you every day last week for help with our emergency fund and you responded so wonderfully. So I just want to tell all of you, because perhaps you've not been able to get the first couple of days programs this week. I just want to tell all of you, thanks that contributed to the emergency fund. We made our goal and it's such a huge help to end time ministry. So thank you very much. All of you that did help. I want to talk to you today about uh, what's going on. First of all, I want to go into the details of this secret agreement to divide Jerusalem. Let me go back to 2015. The election was held in March of 2015, and 
Herzog was doing very well as the leader of the Zionist Union, formerly the Labor Party. And it looked like Herzog was going to be the next prime minister until the last week. The last week, Netanyahu suddenly took a dramatic right turn and said, there will not be a Palestinian state established on my watch. This caused people to rally to him, and he won the election, him and his Likud party. They put together a coalition, but barely. They only were able to put together 61 seats in the Knesset. That's out of 120. That means they had a one-vote majority. That's They were just um, governing by the skin of their teeth. Well, it was this Herzog that would have been prime minister, but he didn't make it. Well, Netanyahu has always favored uh, coalition governments, bringing in both the right and the left, presenting strength, especially when he feels like Israel is under threat. Uh, he's been talking to Herzog for some time, and since he formed his government back in 2015, he has yet to appoint a foreign minister. He kept that ministry for himself, and he didn't really make a secret about it, that he was hoping that Herzog and the Zionist Union would join into the government and that one of the things he would give Herzog in, in uh, return was the ministry, the foreign ministry, the very prestigious foreign ministry, I might say. Uh, those talks are still ongoing, and even as late as within the last couple of days, people are expressing the notion that he does want to be a part of this government. Now, the reason all this is coming down is because there's a lot going on right now. Let me give you an overview of what's going on. Uh, Netanyahu recently spoke over the phone with European Union Foreign Policy Chief Frederick uh, Mogherini, and he was talking to Mogherini about the peace process. The European Union, uh, the EU foreign ministers on Monday backed the French initiative to organize an international conference on the Middle East. So now you have the entire European Union, 500 million people, one of the most powerful forces on the earth, wholly behind the French initiative to hold an international conference to reach a peace deal and, if necessary, impose it upon the parties. And then on Tuesday, Netanyahu called Russian President Vladimir Putin and discussed key aspects of the Palestinian-Israeli peace process. In the meantime, Fatah and Hamas held reconciliation talks uh, this week. I think it was on Wednesday. So they're trying to break down their differences and join themselves together so they can negotiate as one people. Then it's just been announced, I think, yesterday or today, that Netanyahu and Secretary of State John Kerry will meet on Sunday in Rome. Then uh, the Israeli uh, Premier will also meet with UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon in Jerusalem on Monday. So you can see in the last seven days, it is just wall-to-wall -wall diplomacy on the part of Netanyahu himself. Now, what's causing all this? Well, what's happening is world opinion is closing in. Uh, the European Union with this French initiative, you know, on June the 3rd, they had 29 foreign ministers come in and they discussed what the end game should look like. Um, now the United States prevented them from... Uh, reaching any concrete conclusions, uh, hoping to shield Israel from undue pressure. At the same time, the French initiative, Netanyahu's objected to it, saying, look, the only way to get peace in the Middle East is for us to have face-to-face uh, -face negotiations, and therefore he insisted that there must be face-to-face -face negotiations. However, Abbas knows he can't win that game. He believes he can get more with the international community voting and negotiating for him than he could ever get sitting down at the table across from Netanyahu. Netanyahu heads a powerful government, the government of Israel with its tremendous military, and Abbas is exceedingly weak, doesn't even have borders yet, permanent borders. So uh, he's terribly handicapped, and he knows that, and he doesn't think that he will get from Netanyahu what he wants. And so he wants the international community to become sympathetic to the Palestinians, which they are by and large. 
And so he would rather them negotiate it with Israel and pressure Israel. And that process is actually in progress right now. Even the United States has said, look, you better get a deal with the Palestinians or else the international community is going to impose one on you. Now, the idea is if, in fact, the international community would come to a conclusion as to what the agreement should look like, and if Israel re- re- continues to be adamant and to oppose those particular terms, and if they're doing it unreasonably in the minds of the leaders of the of the international community, then the temptation is going to be there for them to go to the UN Security Council, maybe even yet this year, and pass a resolution. They know that Obama favors Israel withdrawing to 67 lines with perhaps a few land swaps. They know Obama favors that. He has openly said that in his speeches. So if they would put such a proposal forward, then perhaps the U.S. would not veto that. And it could take on the force of international law, which is what Netanyahu desperately wants to prevent. Now, why are we even talking about this today? Because if they get this done, it will mark the beginning, listen carefully, all caps, of the final seven years to the battle of Armageddon and the second coming of Jesus to this earth. I mean, my computer is full of articles over the last week or two. People talking about this, pushing towards it. The French are determined. They're not letting up. They're pushing for an international uh, peace conference. Now Egypt's getting involved. Saudi Arabia is getting involved. Others are getting involved. Consequently, the pressure's coming on Netanyahu from everywhere. Now, he's a big boy. He's been in office a long time. He's been involved in world politics for a long time. And he knows how to play the game. He can stall. He can uh, divert. He can do many things. But yet there comes a point when you've got a nation of 7 million people in the middle of 7 billion people. So you have like, what is that? Is that 1% of the world's population? Or maybe less, one-tenth of 1%. I haven't done the calculations. But anyway, when you are sitting there and when the whole world is saying, this is what you must do, the pressure can get overwhelming. And since this would be the greatest prophetic fulfillment in the last 2,000 years when this agreement is signed. And since the French are hoping to do this yet this year, do you get the picture? So what's the possibility then that the final seven years to Armageddon could begin yet this year? Now, that is not a prediction. Please hear me clearly. It is going to happen but I'm not predicting it will happen this year. The French want it to happen this year. The whole world would like for it to happen this year. However, can the Palestinians and the Israelis get together in that agreement? They're going to get together. There is going to be agreement. It's prophesied in the Bible. And that's the way we know that when this agreement is signed, that it will begin the final seven years to the Battle of Armageddon. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be so amazing and so exciting when we finally do see this agreement signed and you and I and the whole world knows, well, the whole world won't know, but we'll be trying to tell the whole world when we know that we have just stepped into the seven year corridor leading and culminating with the second coming, the physical return of Jesus Christ to this earth. I want to say to all of you out there, many of you have been listening to us a long time. We've talked about this subject many times and rightfully so, because when this happens, it'll be the greatest prophetic fulfillment since the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's going to be that huge because when we start the final seven years to Armageddon, it is going to be all out warfare between God and Satan, between good and evil, between the Antichrist and the real Christ, three and a half years after this agreement, the Antichrist will be revealed. At that time, he will launch what's called the Great Tribulation. 
that very difficult three and a half years when he's trying to get rid of all people who do not pledge allegiance to him. And during that same three and a half years, one of the greatest revival in, in the history of the world, the greatest revival in the history of the world, is going to be taking place. When this final seven years begins, you're going to see a mobilization of true Christians like never before. You're also going to see a mobilization of false Christians like never before. The Bible prophesies that most Christians, both Catholic and Protestant, will be deceived by the false prophet. And they will go into an alliance with the Antichrist. But true Christians who understand the prophecies of the Bible are not going to be deceived. And we're going to be preaching as never, ever before. So that's what we're dealing with right now. And when you, if you wonder, why do you talk about this so much? Well, it's because when it happens, we don't want to be caught asleep. We not only want to be awake, but we want to be prepared. End Time Ministries is working daily to be in a situation that we could be on the air 24 hours a day, that we could be here to answer questions, to talk about these things. We have several people on our staff that are gifted and that are knowledgeable because there's going to be so many questions, so many things to talk about. Once the agreement is struck, the Bible teaches that the Temple Mount as a part of this agreement, will be placed under a sharing arrangement under international control, which is what Herzog said. That's what's going to happen. Uh, it's going to be shared between Muslims and Jews with probably Christians allowed to pray up there as well. It's going to be a great interfaith Mecca. Uh, and when I say great, I don't mean it's good. I just simply mean in the eyes of the world, it's going to be, oh, look at this wonderful thing. J Jews, Muslims, Christians, all worshiping together. But it's not going to work out very good. But it's going to start good. And the Jews are then going to build their temple. You are going to witness the building of the Jewish temple on the Temple Mount. They haven't had one for 2,000 years. But they're going to build one. And it is going to be the talk of the world. It's going to capture people's imagination. And all the time they're doing that, we're going to be saying, look, as soon as they get that temple built, they're going to start animal sacrifices. And as soon as they start animal sacrifices, the Antichrist is not going to be allowed to allow to be able to allow it to go on because he's going to meet so much opposition from the animal rights activists and people who simply look at animal sacrifices as barbaric. Therefore, He's going to stop the sacrifices, and when he does, he will stand on the Temple Mount claiming to be God, and that's the event, the Bible says, will mark the middle of this seven-year period and the beginning of the final three and a half years called the Great Tribulation. Now, all this is laid out in your Bible. Let me pause a moment. Never before has it been as important for all of us to have a working knowledge of Bible prophecy. You need to know really what you're talking about. Now, I understand that when you read the prophecies of the Bible, they can be sometimes sort of like eating succotash. You, you know, you don't even know for sure what you're reading. You see beasts and you see horses and you see uh, harlots and you see virgins and you see uh, trumpets and you see horns and it's like, what in the world is all this? Well, we have simplified it for you. We have a course called Understanding the End Time. And we simply break it down in layman's language. I've had so many people walk up to me with their eyes lit up and saying, I understood it. I really understood it. And it has revolutionized a lot of people's lives because now then they know right where they are. They know what is coming and they're getting ready for it. So what I'm saying to you is, if you've never been through the Understanding the End Time series, please immediately get through that series. You can obtain your own copy. Now it's 14 DVDs. It's called Understanding the End Time. And you will understand it. Now, it's going to be scary to go through the end time if you don't understand it. If you do understand it, it's going to be exciting because you're going to know who's on whose side. We tell you in this course what the power base of the Antichrist. I mean, we prove it. We tell you which nations will be a part of 
the power base of the Antichrist, the New World Order, as they like to call it. The Bible discloses who the major nations making up the power base of the Antichrist will be. We tell you who the false prophet will be. We tell you. You will know. There's no doubt about it. And so many other things that everybody needs to understand. So anyway, if you've never been through the Understanding the End Time course, get through it immediately. You can call our offices right now, 1-800-END-TIME. That's 1-800-363-8463. You go through these 14 DVDs, and I promise you, you will know more about Bible prophecy than 95% of the graduates from theological seminary. I'm serious. As a matter of fact, there are many people who've graduated from theological seminary that have turned to our Understand the End Time course in order to understand biblical prophecy, sometimes referred to as eschatology. Why we've adopted that very big, high-sounding name, I don't know. It's simply the prophecies of the Bible. And Jesus wants us to understand. He said, I tell you these things before they come to pass, so that when they do come to pass, you might believe. Okay, so all these things are happening right now. Let me go to my article now because I want you to see. Now, Netanyahu, uh, they announced within the last few days that he and Kerry would be meeting in Rome sometime soon. Well, they've now consolidated the date. Uh, That's going to be happening uh, this coming Sunday. And then on Monday, Netanyahu will be meeting, he will be meeting with Ban Ki-moon, the Secretary General of the United Nations. I'm telling you, the train is picking up speed. Let me give you a little bit from the article announcing the meeting between uh, Kerry and Netanyahu. The meeting comes amid increasing international activities aimed at reviving Israeli-Palestinian peace efforts, particularly the French Initiative which has raised a great deal of concern in Netanyahu's bureau. On June 3rd, France hosted a summit of foreign ministers in Paris who discussed ways in which the international community could help advance the prospects for peace. Now watch, including by providing meaningful incentives to the parties to make peace. I mean, the international community is willing to put up billions to finally get all this settled. The article goes on to say Netanyahu recently spoke over the phone with EU foreign policy chief Federico uh, Mogherini, uh, reported AFP. And on Tuesday, he called Russian President Vladimir Putin and discussed key aspects of the Palestinian-Israeli peace process. The Israeli premier will also meet with UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon in Jerusalem on Monday. The UN chief will be in Israel and the Palestinian Authority as part of a Middle East tour. Okay, there was something else here that I really wanted you to see. Here we go. Herzog and this agreement. Now, I'll tell you what. I'm about out of time in this segment, and there's something that you've got to hear. Let me go on down here because this article has appeared, and this is not quite related, but yet it's related. Has ISIS infiltrated Homeland Security? Orlando terrorist worked for major Department of Homeland Security contractor. Now, here's the question. Has ISIS infiltrated our Homeland Security organization? Here's what the article says. The Orlando nightclub terrorist who pledged allegiance to ISIS worked almost a decade, 10 years, for a major Department of Homeland Security contractor, raising alarms that ISIS sympathizers and agents have infiltrated the federal agency set up after 911 to combat terrorists. Well, if I were a terrorist, wouldn't I want to infiltrate Homeland Security? You better believe. Anyway, officials say Omar Mateen, an Afghan, Afghan American who held two firearms licenses and a security officer license, was employed by the security firm G4S. Secure Solutions USA, Inc., since September 10, 2007. The Jupiter, Florida-based company merged with Walken Hut Corporation after 911 and assumed federal contracts. G4S supports the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, Customs and Border Protection, 
with its operations at the U.S., Mexico border, and with U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement to transport illegal immigrants in selected urban areas, the company says in a brochure titled Providing Manpower Solutions for Government Services. The DHS contract with G4S is worth more than $234 million. The contract states that one of the performance requirements is helping identify suspected terrorists. Now, that's who Mateen was working for. One of their jobs was helping to identify suspected terrorists trying to enter the U.S. The security contractor also provides security guards and other security services for 90% of U.S. nuclear facilities. Do what? This guy was working for the firm who provides security services for 90% of our nuclear facilities? You've got to be kidding me. G4S uses fortified buses to transport hundreds of thousands of illegal immigrants from city to city and from cities to the U.S.-Mexican border. But earlier this month, Judicial Watch revealed G4S has been quietly moving and releasing van loads of illegal aliens away from the border to the interior of American cities. Wow. Is that mind-boggling that this terrorist that killed 49 people, wounded 53, has been working for the last nine years for a major contractor for Homeland Security? Absolutely amazing and unbelievable. Well, one more time, it's so important for you to understand the prophecies of the Bible. 14 DVD set, Understand the End Time. We'll ship it out to you before this day is over. The number to call, 800-END-TIME, 800-363-8463. We'll take your call for the next segment. We'll be back. What an incredibly important subject we have today, Islam in Bible prophecy. It hasn't been many years since those planes flew into the trade towers in New York City, and suddenly the attention of the world was riveted on this religion, Islam, that very few of us knew very much about. But if you had to guess the religion of a suicide bomber, what religion would you guess? Now, could this religion, this huge religion, be totally absent from the prophecies of the Bible? We're going to find out today. It's not true. Islam is in your Bible. To order our DVDs, Islam in Bible Prophecy, and Will Islam Rule the World? Call 1-800-END-TIME or go to endtime.com. Ever wish that there was a newspaper that just reported articles that related to Bible prophecy? Well, endtime.com has just that. We have stories fresh off the press that you can get on the Prophecy in the News page. Reporting daily, we make sure that you know the latest that is going on in Bible prophecy. You can also join the conversation, discussing articles with others, and asking questions about the news stories to our staff. We've got extra, and you can read all about it by going to endtime.com, and on the homepage you'll find Prophecy in the News. If your radio station only carries the first 30 minutes of End of the Age, go to endtime.com and click the watch button to continue today's broadcast. You can also finish up later by clicking the archives button. If you have questions or comments, the number to be on the air with me, 877-END-TIME. That's 877-363-8463. To reach our operators, that number is 1-800-END-TIME. Now, End Time Ministries is here to make sure you don't get blindsided with all these events. And we talk about many things here that you're not going to hear on your major news sources, but we dig them out for you every single day. And we really concentrate on the important ones, the ones that really pertain to the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. We live in the time of more biblical prophecy fulfillment than any other era in the history of mankind. We live in that time right now. 
But most people are walking through it and don't even know it. But this is not the first time that's happened. It happened at the first coming of Jesus. They had many, many prophecies about the first coming of Jesus, and Jesus fulfilled every one of them in the most minute detail. I'm talking about what tribe he would be a part of, what city he would be born in, how he would die, uh, the amount of money he would be betrayed for, what would be done with the money, uh, his resurrection. It's all prophesied. No one should have missed his first coming. And most people did, but not everyone did. There were those who understood the prophecies and they knew he was the Messiah. They reveled in it even while the world was against him and ended up crucifying him. They still knew. Well, we're entering into a time very much like that now, only we're right before the second coming of Jesus. We're watching the prophecies come past all around us. I'm watching this right now with this subject today we're talking about. Uh, we started off by talking about something going on. Let me just quickly review. Some of you I know join us partway through the program. Let me tell you what's going on right now. Netanyahu recently spoke on the phone with the EU foreign policy chief, uh, Federica Mogherini, uh, within the last week. On Monday, EU foreign ministers backed the French initiative to organize an international conference on the Middle East to push an agreement through. And remember, when this agreement is pushed through, when it's done, the final seven years to Armageddon will begin. On Tuesday, Netanyahu called Russian President Vladimir Putin and discussed key aspects of the Palestinian-Israeli peace process. In the meantime this week, Fatah and Hamas have conducted reconciliation talks, hoping to get the Palestinians back together, undoubtedly so that they could sign a peace agreement as one. They also are set uh, to take place in Egypt this week, additional talks. Uh, Netanyahu and Secretary of State John Kerry will meet Sunday in Rome, and then on Monday, the Israeli Premier will also meet with the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon in Jerusalem. So what's going on? Is this all just sort of happening, or is something really pushing all this? Well, the fact is, something is indeed pushing it because the French are determined to get a peace deal. Netanyahu and Kerry would love to get a peace deal before they leave office. Of all the things they could dream of, that would be number one. You talk about Obama's legacy. If he could pull that off, you can forget all the rest of the stuff. I mean, he really doesn't want to be known for Obamacare because it's a disaster. And I mean, the you know... Uh, Friends of mine said to me right after Obama came, care came out, oh, I really love it. I'm getting home, I'm getting medical care really cheap. I saw them the other day, and they said, uh, my cost for Obamacare just jumped $600 per month. I mean, increase by. And they weren't smiling about Obamacare anymore because it's a disaster. Well, but if President Obama and Secretary of State John Kerry if they could pull off a peace deal, everything else would uh, pale into irrelevancy in comparison with this huge achievement, which people have been trying to do ever since the birth of the nation of Israel and before. So that's where we are right now. Yes, they would love to have it all uh, come together for a peace deal before President Obama leaves office. And that's what they're trying to do right now. Uh, the, the French are trying to do it. The European Union now, they all, all 28 nations endorsed the French initiative on Monday. So they're putting their weight behind it. Uh, John Kerry went to the meeting of uh, foreign ministers on June the 3rd that France sponsored. He's there participating. Now he's visiting with Netanyahu uh, this coming Sunday. I mean, there is activity everywhere. They're trying to push this thing through, and we don't want to be... Uh, taken unawares by it. Um, now, we do want to take your calls today on the air. Uh, the number to call to be with me on the air is 877 time. And Jim Stickelman is anchoring the program back in Plano, Texas. So, Jim, let's get started. All righty. Uh, again, to talk to Irvin, it's one eight seven seven end time That's 363-8463. Let's start today out in Arizona with Lawrence. You're first up. 
Hey, good morning, Nervin. Good morning. How are you? Oh, I'm I'm doing good. I just now this is kind of maybe changing the subject slightly, uh, but uh, but it uh, has to do with this uh, vote where they're taking over in England today. And I, I was just thinking, I hadn't heard you address this uh, from prophecy. Uh, it would indicate that that uh, of course uh, Russia is represented by the bear, and England is represented by the lion, and Germany is represented by the by the uh, leopard and uh, but but then there's the uh, the ten horned beast that uh, would indicate a I guess a a, a union a European Union uh, that's uh, that's been modified from what it is now so and since uh, since the those three nations are represented by themselves having their own representation of of a symbol. Uh, doesn't it indicate that they're no longer uh, one of the ten horns? You know, I'm not sure about that, Lawrence. Uh, we uh-huh. know that the the Bible tells us these ten horns are ten kings, but they're ten horns on one beast. Now, beast always represents a kingdom or a nation. So apparently, yeah. there's an, there is an alliance, and there are going to be ten rulers that come together to form this alliance. We do not yet know who this Ten Nation Alliance is. We do know that it has to come out of Europe because it's symbolized in Daniel 2, verse 44, 40, 42 and 44, as being made up of iron mingled with clay. Well, the iron is the Roman Empire and the clay is the holy part, so it's part of the Holy Roman Empire. So they, these Ten Kings must be a part of Europe, the Holy Roman Empire. But we don't know which ten kings it's going to be since the European Union presently has 28 members. So it looks like possibly that the lion, the leopard, the bear, they could be separate from the ten horns. I just don't know whether there's any overlapping or not. But we're probably going to find out pretty quick now because this ten horn beast will soon emerge on the world scene and we'll know who it is at that time. Right now I can't tell you for sure. I, I hope that. Okay, I, I just hadn't heard you comment on that before, so I appreciate okay, you. I just hadn't heard you comment. Okay, well, thank you very much, and we're picking up your radio in the background there, Lawrence. So we're going to let you uh, go. Anyway, well, this is a big question right now because, as many of you know, Britain is voting today to leave the European Union. Uh, the returns are not yet in. They say it's probably going to be uh, early morning before we know. Uh, be around breakfast time in Europe. It'll be about one or two in the morning here in the United States before they know for sure whether Britain voted themselves out of the European Union or whether they stayed in. But you know, this is the great thing about Bible prophecy. Everybody's wondering what's going to happen. And I've had people ask me repeatedly, okay, are they going out? Are they staying in? And I say, look, it doesn't matter because the Bible says Great Britain is going to be a part of the kingdom of the Antichrist. Revelation 13, verse 1 and 2 describes the end-time power base of the Antichrist. Body of the leopard, Germany. Feet of the bear, Russia. Mouth of the lion, Great Britain. Ten horns of the ten horn kingdom. The European Union in some form or fashion. So that's going to be the power base of the Antichrist. So it doesn't matter whether they get out or stay in. They're still going to be an integral part of the kingdom of the Antichrist in these last times. So that's another thing. While the whole world is stewing over whether they jump out or get in, it don't matter. The, the stock market, the world's stock market has rallied now because it the word is out that they're going to stay in even though the final vote is not in yet. Now, if suddenly the vote comes in and they stay out, the stock market's going to temporarily fall. But it won't make any difference because Great Britain is going to be a part of the end time kingdom of the Antichrist himself. So uh, that's what we know when we look at the prophecies of the Bible. There's so many people wondering what in the world is going on. Well, when you know your Bible, when you know Bible prophecy, you know what is going on. Okay, Jim, uh, we'll go right back to you. All right, let's go now to Joe from Kentucky. You're next up on End of the Age. Uh, Yes, sir. Um, Um. I was wondering, uh, um, uh, 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 Joe, if you've got your if you got your radio on, why don't you turn it down because it's going to me- mess you up. Oh, 
Okay. Uh, okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I hear you. But the thing is, there's a little bit of a delay. And if you're trying to talk while you're listening at the same time, you're not going to know whether you're pitching or catching. Okay. Uh, okay. I just have I just have a uh, comment about you know uh, about you know Barack Obama. You know all the things that I've seen this man doing in the White House and all the stuff, and you know things that I'm trying to research on, you know, by myself and all the stuff. You know, I have come to that conclusion that this man is a Muslim. You know, and I mean, I know that a lot of Muslims, you know, when they convert to, you know, another religion, all the stuff, they don't have to renounce their religion officially. Which, you know, that that's what you know. You know, it it should be done, but a lot of Muslims don't do that. You know, so well, you know, Lawrence. But, uh, um, there's a lot of people that share your opinion. Uh, now he claims to be a Christian. I don't know whether he's ever said I'm not a Muslim. I think he just says I'm a Christian, and I'll never forget well, the first I mean, time I was. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, maybe he's. Uh, well, you know, I would say. You know, going to uh, Jeremiah Jeremiah Wright's church, that doesn't make him a Christian because I don't consider Jeremiah Wright's, Wright's uh, a Christian. Yeah, you know, well, he's more of a radical than anything. Somebody who calls, you know, uh, the Lord Jesus a, a, a Palestinian, you know, is not a Christian, you know. And, uh, yeah, well, you know. Uh, I'll tell you what, Joe, let, let me just say this. I was in Turkey. And we had a, a young Muslim man, he's a very nice man, for our guide. And knowing that all of us were Christians, he stood up in front of our bus and he said, Now, I know you're Christians, I'm Muslim. But before you can be a Muslim, you've got to be a good Jew and a good Christian. Well, he had my attention. So I said, uh, wait a minute, what do you mean by that? He said, well, we believe in Abraham, he's a prophet in, in the Islamic religion. We believe in Moses. We believe in Jesus. We believe Jesus was a prophet. I, and I'd never heard that before back in those days. I said, really? You believe Jesus was a prophet? And he said, yes, of course. And I said, well, do you believe he was the Messiah? And he said, no, we don't believe that. I said, well, you must believe he's a false prophet because he claimed to be the Messiah. He looked at me and said, hmm, I'll have to ask my mother about that. Uh, he had never heard that question before, apparently. Listen, you're listening to End of the Age. We have one segment left. We'll be taking your calls. 877 N times the number to call. Many people are very concerned about the direction of our country, the United States of America. Some are predicting its demise. But we at End Time Ministries are happy to announce that there is hope for the future of our nation we love so much. The United States and its special role in the future are specifically prophesied in the Bible. In our new DVD, America's God-Given Destiny, Irvin Baxter explains what the Bible says about the future of our nation and the role we are prophesied to fulfill in the end time. We have dedicated this new DVD to helping the Jewish people. As anti-Semitism is rising rapidly around the world, we want to help them get to safety in Israel. Go to endtime.com and under Irvin's Thoughts, click America's God-Given Destiny or call 1-800-END-TIME to find out how you can be involved in this exciting project and receive our new DVD. Let's join together and bring revival to our nation by doing what God has called us to do. We do have open lines here at End of the Age. If you'd like to be on the air with us, right now is your time. The number to call to be on the air with Jim and myself, 877-END-TIME. That's 877-363-8463. If you'd like to reach our operators, perhaps you want to become a partner with us. I hope you will. We need you. God needs you. And, it, and you'll be blessed. But if you'd like to be a partner with us, call 800-END-TIME. Our operators will help you with that. 
or if you'd like to purchase the Understanding the End Time series, uh, that's something everybody should do. Uh, it'll, it'll help you. It'll help your family. I mean, we've got women who get this whose husbands won't go to church, but they get interested in the series. And all of a sudden, I, I mean, if your husband likes listening to news, CNN, Fox, other news uh, channels, they will love the Understanding the End Time series. I promise you. We've had so many because we take world events and put them, show how that they are actually fulfilling the prophecies of the Bible. And I mean, it is astounding. It's amazing. So anyway, uh, it's there for, if you'd like to have it, the number to call to reach our operators, 800 in time, it's called understanding the end time. Some of you forgot to get something for your father for father's day. Didn't you? Well, guess what? You can make it all up. Get him a set of the Understanding End Time series. He will love it. Okay, we're going right back to the phones now. And Jim, back to you. All right, let's go now to Illinois and Bonnie. You're next up on End of the Age. Hi. Um, first of all, I every time I talk to you, I have to say thank you. Um, what you, the evidence that you provide is, I can't. I can't find anything to dispute with it. I really can't. Um, it's very powerful. Um, anyway. Well, thank you, Bonnie. Um, I, the gentleman who is the call screener today, uh, I was talking to him for a moment, and um, a few days ago I had emailed, uh, and he remembers seeing it, um, and I like you guys to incur, like to encourage you guys to look at it. I sent an email with a link to something I had come across, and um, there's a, a gentleman doing a, um, a YouTube video, and in it he says that there is evidence, or and I don't remember what all what it is. He said that the two state solution has already been signed by Ariel Sharon, <clears throat> and that there are some in the Knesset who want to, uh, like, uh, don't want to back it, and, uh, you know, the Israeli people are just, like, not ready for it. Um, but I thought you might find that uh, interesting to see what more you can find out about it. Um, my other thing is... Um, I would like to encourage you to do a study specifically, you know, like you do on TV about the um, the seven seals. Um, I think that would be um, very informative. I suspect that we are in the um, fifth seal right now with all these Christians who are purposely being slaughtered by... Um, ISIS, um, and that, you know, may just continue for a while. Um, something interesting that I had heard Donald Trump say, I, I just thought of this while you were talking to somebody else earlier. Donald Trump, I heard a speech that he, uh, a few weeks ago that he gave. He is anti-globalist. I don't know if anybody has brought that point out. He's very anti-globalist. And um, he's, as many people I'm sure have noticed, he's very pro-Israel. Uh, but I actually heard him talk about um, brokering a peace deal for Israel. And I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, he seems to be the only one with the skill set of all of the people that are has signed up to run in this election in, like, all the different parties. He seems to be the only one with not just the experience, but the skill set needed to bring about what needs to happen to make the eagle great again, and with his statement about making America great again, and that the Bible specifically says that the eagle will be great. But anyway... Um, I will stop talking. That's all I had to say today. Okay, well, thank you very much, Bonnie. And it is interesting that this present presidential election is focusing on issues that are very prophetic. 
Now let's make something clear. Donald Trump is not the Messiah. However, like uh, Bonnie po- pointed out, excuse me for a moment, as Bonnie pointed out, he is very much against globalism. And globalism is, of course, the idea that we should move into a system of global government. And in my opinion, that is the burning issue of this campaign. And that is that one party is pushing for letting down all the walls, moving into a global society, and the other person is saying, no, we don't want to quit being a country. We do not want to be melted into globalism. We want to retain our Declaration of Independence. There are actually politicians out there that are saying, we need to disavow the Declaration of Independence and to adopt a Declaration of Interdependence. There are many people that have actually said that in one way or another. So that's really the burning issue of where we are right now. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the end time right now. All the pieces of the puzzle are coming together, and we would be foolish not to recognize that exactly for what it is. So as far as Bonnie's um, request to do a special a program someday on the seven seals i'm sure we'll get to do that because it is very important and very pertinent to where we are right now it would make a great program okay thank you very much bonnie and let me see do we have time we do let's go to our next caller jim all right let's go now to missouri with jill you're next up on into the age hello hi jill how are you i'm doing wonderful except for my coffee and other than that i'm doing great what's on your mind <laughs> I um, want to tell you that you have completely changed my life. Um, I have always been interested in Bible prophecy from I'm 50, but I've been interested in it since I was a teenager, had always studied, and you brought it all together. It is just, you are just such a blessing. Well, thank you. And uh, I'm trying to teach on Wednesdays a little, going through the, I have the 14 DVD set, And I was wondering if you could answer a question for me about the ten horns of the ten horn beast that in the mingled body in the end. When you say the Antichrist uproots three, are you saying that those three will be, they'll be the ten king alliance and that three will be dethroned by him, three countries will be overthrown? How how does that work? The Bible says there will be, Ten rulers, ten kings, Mm -hmm. but they'll be part of one entity, one beast. A beast in Bible prophecy always represents a nation or a kingdom. So whether these ten have merged together in some kind of a coalition, exactly how it will happen, all I can tell you is what the Bible says. The Bible says that these ten are ten kings that will arise and they will give their strength and power to the Antichrist. Then... Among these ten kings, there will come up another one who will uproot three. Now, what does that mean? It appears to mean that perhaps he will take control of three of these nations. He will become uh, the the dominant force, or maybe he will be. Maybe the three of them will merge into one, and he will be the leader. The Bible doesn't give us exactly how that's going to come to pass. I'm sure when it happens, it's going to be easy to recognize. Nevertheless. Uh, that's the best I can tell you. The Bible says that he will uproot and then he will become very powerful. He will wax great and he will become the Antichrist himself. So that's one of the ways we're going to know for certain who the Antichrist is. When we see this 10 nation union and then we see someone come up and uproot three of those 10 and then he becomes greater and greater, we're going to know who we're dealing with right then. We're going to know that is the Antichrist himself. Will that happen before or after um, the uh, the abomination of desolation. I'm almost sure that will happen before the abomination of desolation. Uh, Because at the abomination of desolation, the Antichrist is going to stand on the Temple Mount and claim to be Messiah and God. So uh, the Bible doesn't give us the time exactly when that's going to happen. But 
uh, we're going to be able to identify the Antichrist when he stands on the Temple Mount claiming to be Messiah and God, even though the Bible doesn't tell us exactly the the time that it's going to happen, yet it only stands to reason in my mind that uh, he'll uproot the three and he'll wax great and then he'll become recognized as the leader of the world community at which time he's going to be charged with presiding over the Temple Mount because that's going to be placed under international control. And so when the uh, offering of sacrifices on the Temple Mount becomes an issue, that's when he's going to say, wait a minute, we can't do this anymore. The Bible specifically says that the Antichrist will cause the sacrifice and the oblation to stop. And for the overspread of abominations, he makes it desolate. So when he stops those sacrifices, it appears he will at the same time say you don't need these sacrifices anymore. The Bible says he will claim to be God. I don't know how he's going to do that, whether he's going to say I'm your Messiah or uh, I don't know how he's going to do that. But the Bible says he will stand in the temple of God claiming to be God. And when he does that, that's the abomination of desolation. And we at that moment will move into the great tribulation uh, which will last for the next 42 months at that time. Right. Well, that's that's very good to know that you that we'll most likely know before he actually does it by the by the uprooting of three. That's good to know. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Jill. Appreciate the phone call. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me just one more time tell you things are moving in the Middle East. Will we get a peace agreement yet this year? I would rather say no, but I'm not sure I'm right, because there is a lot of movement right now. President Obama desperately wants a peace agreement. And now then the game has shifted to the point that now there's a possibility they will try to impose a peace agreement on the Palestinians and the Israelis at the UN Security Council. It's going to be very interesting. We've mentioned today several times our Understanding in Time series. All I can tell you is, if you've not been through that series, I would make that my next priority. Get through it. It'll bless you and your family and your friends. It's great for your Sunday school classes. It's great for your small groups, and many churches are using it for their Bible study night. So if you've never been through the Understanding in Time series, why don't you call right now? The number to call is 1-800-IN-TIME. That's 1-800-363-8463. Our operators are there right now to answer your phone calls. While you're at it, become a monthly partner with In Time Ministries. We need you. It's the In Time now. And by the way, if you've not yet subscribed to In Time Magazine, that's the magazine you should be subscribed to in the In Time. 800-IN-TIME is the number to call. is a production of End Time Ministries. This broadcast will be available on our website, endtime.com, in the archive section. On our website, you'll also find more information about how current events are fulfilling Bible prophecy. To reach our operators, call 1-800-END-TIME. That's 1-800-363-8463. End Time Ministries is partner-supported. We would like to say thank you to our partners who made this broadcast possible. To do what Matthew 24, 14 said, to reach the world with the gospel of the kingdom.